From Melrose Arts, this is Art in Action, a series of live art demonstrations by prominent local artists. Working before an audience, the artists describe their process and answer questions about their technique. They show you their approach to art in a very personal way. From the art of encaustic, reverse painting on glass, fiber art, and calligraphy, it's all here. Sponsored by Melrose Arts, a volunteer group dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose. These monthly art demos are open to the public and free of charge. Today on Art in Action, marine artist Steve Lush shows us how to compose and paint a watercolor of a traditional sailing vessel at sea. Steve demonstrates his technique in creating detail and washes to bring this piece to completion. Steve is a marine artist who works mostly in watercolor, but occasionally produces pieces in oil, acrylic, and pastel. What I was thinking about doing tonight was um, this, I did this quick sketch and this is basically a, a French pilot cutter and what they, what they did out of Nantes, France, which is on the Normandy coast. And uh, these, these cutters would bring the pilots, which are basically captains, to bring them out to the ships that are leaving the harbor and bring them out to the end of the roadstead and then they get back in the boat and they sail back to the port. So I, I basically do this out. It's a pretty simple cutter rig. Cutter is a, the mass is basically dead center and it's gaff rigged. And I thought it was interesting enough to, to show you folks. So. And then from that, um, depending on my mood, I might do a, a watercolor sketches for a, I didn't really like this one. So I did another one. I kind of like that one better. Just kind of gives me an idea of what I want to do. After I did those two sketches and that pencil sketch, I spent some time drafting this thing. So this is what I'm going to paint. Um, I brought all my tools. This is, um, this is the palette that I like when I'm at home in my studio. So this is nice and solid. It doesn't move. Um, gives you a lot of room to mix colors. Spray bottles, water. I have some brushes here that I like the most. I don't normally like to use masking fluid. In some occasions I do use it sparingly so that I can accent a detailed line, a white line, and paint over it real quick. So what I'd like to do with the um, masking fluid, because I've got this kind of dark in the front here, and this is going to be kind of a very mild day at sea, and I, I want the reflections to be somewhat in the front here, but it's going to be a little bit of tuberculated water, I guess you could call it. So there's, there's going to be, it's going to be dark up in here. So I have a, this bow, is, it's called a plum, a plum bow, and, and it's, a, it's a real straight, hard line right here. And if you, I don't know if you can see that, but there's this edge of the, the stem that I'd like to have pronounced. And there's also a highlight along the cap rail that I'd like to have pronounced. Because it adds interest if you're looking at a marine painting. You have to have something in there that's got some detail. Um, you can put too much detail in it, it kills it. And there's a white, um, this is a, a strake here that's, it kind of sticks out from the planking that it's also white. And I'd like to have that on both sides here somewhat uh, standing out. So what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll mask those, let that dry, and I'll probably put a, a light wash on the hull. I think I'm going to concentrate on the hull. There's a couple of folks inside here. Perhaps the, uh, the rigging and the, and the mast, just get the mast in, in place. And then I might put a wash on everything and once I've got the boat centered here. All right, so let's see if I can get this on here. So I'm gonna put this mask right down here. And you gotta be really careful with this stuff because you can, you can become really sterile and you kinda have to brush over too to, to, to kill the uh, intensity of it because it doesn't look natural. I mean, it's obviously much better to paint around the white spots, but sometimes you're forced to do this. So I'll put this right along the cap rail. And as, as you can see, as you go back towards the stern of the boat, it's going to be lighter back here. It's going to actually have more of the color of the sky and the sea, so it won't be so dark, so I don't really need the mask back there. Yeah, let's see, a little bit, maybe a little right there, and a little right there. 
Now there's one, there's one line that goes off the tip of the bowsprit here. There's one thin line that goes back here. And I'd like to highlight that. But I may not be able to use this. So I might have to use one of these really fine brushes to do that. All right, so there's that line there. Now this real thin line I drew off the bow. You'll, you'll see it when, this, when I start pulling this stuff off. Um, and maybe just a couple of spots in here with us. There's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a um, disturbed water around the hull that, that needs to be kind of bright. I think that's all I need to do there. One of the things I use also between, uh, it depends on what kind of effect I want, I do use the hair dryer. It does speed up some time. So what I'll do is um, I generally just spray everything in the palette here, get everything wet. And I think what I'm going to use on the hull right here is uh, this is a, I got this brush uh, about a week ago in Cambridge. I, I do like these squirrel hair brushes. This is a number five. It's got a nice point to it. So, all I really want to do is just get, just get some color on the hull so I can see what I'm doing. I'm using a little bit of ochre here. Actually, make sure this stuff is dry. I mean, if you're going to spend time doing a, a marine art piece, from my perspective, is you do need to do it slowly and take your time doing it because, because when you put it on display, not only are artists looking at it for content and color balance and all that, but your rivet counters are looking at it. You know, they, they want to know where every line is and that was not right. So, you, you know, you do have to, I just learned this, you just have to do this. So, uh, I actually I need one more line on here. What weight paper are you? Uh, I like 300, but I, I do use 140 if I'm out in the field. Mm -hmm. This is 300. This ship in the background now, it's, it's leaving, it's going out, going out across the English Channel. And what, I'm, what I want to have it is, you know, kind of, it's, it's going to kind of blend in with the sky and it may be a little bit of shadow under the fantail, which is the stern part of the ship. And you can see <laughs> she's riding high or she's in ballast, which means she has have no cargo on board. So the, the, the rudder, which is back here, is kind of visible. So there'll be some shadow like this. There'll be some shadow from the bow of the, uh, of the uh, pilot cutter, and there'll be some right in here where this rigging is. Do you generally paint over uh, dark pencil marks, or are you doing that for other? I'm doing it for your benefit tonight. I don't generally do it, but that just means I needed thicker washes on here. And the bow spurt. And probably in some of these folks in here, a little bit of the mast. All right. Like I say, I'm just getting some color on here so I can I can see this. Uh, The mast and the gaff, which is this spar up here, and the boom, which is this spar here, they're generally uh, varnished. Uh, well, in this country, they would be spruce, and same with the mast. So they would have kind of a reddish, reddish color to them. And this piece up here, this is called the cross tree. That's that's not going to, uh, sometimes those can be white, um, but in this case, it's dark. Like I say, with some of these, you've got to be, you've got to be careful where you're, where you're putting the, uh, the pigment because, like in the sail here, um, it's, 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 wove, it's wove onto the spars, and it's not real tight like a modern sailboat where the bottom and the top of the sail is is sitting in a track that's you can't see through it. In these older vessels, it's it's lashed on there, so there'll be 
gaps and these little arches where you should be able to see through. You want to see the sky on the opposite side. And there's a, there's a number of places where these exist. And if you, if you, you want to make sure you add, you don't paint them out so that you can have the sky color come through them. Kind of like painting a tree. You want to have the light come through the tree. There's certain parts of the sailing vessels that you want light to come through. The sail on these gaff rig vessels, that's where you want it to come through. What color do you use? Right here, this is um, a little bit of okra right now and um, burnt sienna. Now I think we'll put some color in the sky. So I'm thinking in the sky, it's going to be kind of a quiet day that may be a little bit foreboding, so I might want to mix cobalt with a little bit of valerian crimson and kind of give it a gray, a grayish blue tone, the tint of red, and maybe as I get down near the horizon, maybe a little bit more valerian crimson and carry that down into the water and then darken it right in here. So I'm thinking. I don't know if that's going to work. That's what I'm thinking. So let's see if that works. Do you ever wet the paper first? Sometimes. If I'm doing something that's really crazy, throwing paint down, I, I do that, but I'm, I'm not in this one. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do that shocks people is when it's all done, I may take my um, toothbrush and spray opaque pigment on it. Kind of gives it a bit of, uh, I don't know, life. See if this is going to work. All right, so I know you want to see this. And I don't want to get this pigment on the edge of this sail right here. I want that to be white. Trying to get into those, those little openings right in there. There's an opening right here. Right here, there's an opening. And right in here, there's an opening. <coughs> Up here, there's an opening. And some of this color is going to carry down into the sail as well. The sails are basically going to reflect um, a lot of, or carry a lot of the color that's in the sky sea and the sky. I want to get this. Down here. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to get that ship painted. So I want to paint around that. You know, a lot of times when I'm, I'm working in my studio, I'm working on a, um, a drafting table and I'm sitting down. I'm not, I'm not normally standing up doing stuff that's really detailed. Um, and I want this to be white in here and I want that to be white there. the sail to stay white. I mean, I'll bring some of this color into the sail when I'm doing the sails, but right now, I don't want to do that. Um, now I'm spreading a bit of Alerian, Alerizin crimson, um, which I also have in the sky, and working a bit on the, uh, the main boom, which I'm trying to brush in carefully the horizon, the horizon line, and uh, touch up the sky a little bit. You've got to be careful when you go back into the sky because if you 
if it's already a dried wash, you, you, you could end up with these plumes. That sometimes they look good, but sometimes they don't. And this kind of a pain, they wouldn't look too good. Yeah, sometimes I just do this to just let the water move around until I see something that I like. And this is uh, Alarian crimson, uh, Alarazon crimson. Is that the right way to say it? Alizarin crimson. That's So let's let that sit for a little bit. <sighs> All right, I think I can get into the boat here. So let me use a little bit of this and that. So I'm using some Payne's Gray and a mix of burnt umber and this is. Um, Hooker's green. I like this hooker's green because it's it's transparent. So. I'm not really cleaning the mixing part, portion of the palette often because I, I do want the colors to somewhat blend with each other so that when I go in and I bring another uh, wash in, the, the values haven't really changed much, it's subtle changes. And so let's see if this is going to work. And you know, when you're doing detail on a ship, it, you don't really need to paint the detail, but if you kind of paint around things and you let white lines or paper pop through, just different shapes, I mean, you know that a deck of a ship has got ropes and cleats and capstans and all that stuff, and so if you're, you don't really need to detail it, but I think if you just kind of experiment with the brush and kind of move it around and leave gaps, uh, it usually works. And, and the other thing about painting boats, too, is you want to make sure that the, um, what we call the shear line, the shear line is, the, is the, the curve that's defined by the rail of the, the vessel. And, and that's, if, I think if you get the shear line right, um, if you're doing a boat, that's probably the, the most important thing. Uh, you're probably going to have a painting that you're going to like. And, and the other thing, too, is you want to make sure that <clears throat> the boat looks like it's sitting in the water and not on top of the water. So generally, that means that you, you know, you got to kind of bring the, you know, you got to kind of bring the vessel down into the water with the paint. Like I mentioned before, there's a few fellows on here, and uh, I, want, I do want to define their faces eventually. It wasn't dry right there. It's good to have a paper towel in your hand at all times because occasionally the, 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 wa the water wash will get away from you. You don't want it to uh, drip down or go onto an area that you'd, you've been developing. Just kind of drop in some Payne's Gray in here. I already have a Payne's Gray Hooker's Green mix on it already. Still working on the uh, bringing the values down and trying to keep it between the hull, the spars, the reflections in the water. And you can see that highlight I'm trying to retain in the front that's a combination of a reflection of the sail and a little bit of disturbed water in the front of the hull. Because the boat, even though it's a calm sea, it is moving through the water slowly and it is disturbing a bit of the water. So what I want to do is carry some of this with clean water over here. Um, there is some white water rippling around the, the bow and off to the sides a little bit, so I'll probably blend that in a little bit to make that white area quite a bit smaller. Um, that dry for a little bit. This 
So I've got a couple of figures on here, and I've just basically drew in ovals where their faces are. There's usually two or three, maybe four guys in one of these vessels, a um, couple of pilots and, and, and crew hand, and deck hands that are just actually sailing this vessel and not going aboard the larger vessel. What I'm using here is a little bit of cad red, some cad orange. trying to intensify the sky a little bit here because the stronger the value of the sky is around the sails, the more the sails will pop. The, the, you want them to stand out then to be able to work into that really strong white color. The reflected light and some of the soft contours of the sail, which you can do when everything is dry around it. As I said, I'm trying to paint around this ship because I want it to kind of stand out. So what I might do here is this. Make sure that the washes that I put in the sky and on the water kind of move around and the you can actually see the water running across the paper and you can actually control where it's flooding to and you can, you can actually see the colors moving across the paper. Kind of letting some of this water run around in where the crew is on board this vessel. See if I can get it to do what I want it to do. So one thing it's about watercolors is, I mean, you are hoping a lot of times that the mistakes you make are successful. You have to kind of, <laughs> you kind of have to just let it happen and don't get too panicky over it. I think I have to let this dry. So I know the white of the sails have to be reflecting somewhat in the water. Right, right in here, I probably want to leave that alone. A lot will depend, too, on, on what color I make the sails. So we take a little bit of the cobalt blue. <coughs> touch of the crimson. I have to kind of put some gray backlight and back back shadows on the sails because it is, uh, it is reflecting the, the darkness of the hull bouncing off the water back into the sail and it is kind of an overcast day so it's, there's really not a lot of light coming into the sails other than uh, just gray light from all around. So As we get out near the ends we want it whiter. You kind of have to look at it, flutter a little bit, let it dry, move it out. <clears throat> Again if you do it slowly and you step back and look at your work every now and again and squint your eyes, you can, you can tell when it, when it looks right or, or turn it upside down. Now the sails on these older vessels, the sails have, um, they're made up of uh, probably 18 inch wide, two foot wide panels that are sewn together longitudinally. So you can spend a lot of time drafting those in, but, but if you do that, the, the painting really looks very, very static. Um, better to have just a few of them done in, suggested, but you do need to paint them in with a thin, thin brush. And this sail in here, this is a staysail, which is a sail between the mainsail and the jib. The jib is this one out front. This is more in shadow. Up there, and then as it comes down and breaks out at the bottom down here, it's more white. 
And the sails were actually more of a, in these older vessels, they weren't really white. They were a kind of a tan, uh, antique white color, I guess you could say. So that sail is basically tucked in behind this sail and it's overlapping a little bit of the mainsail right here. And you can't really see it. Well, you can see these lines, these are what we call the shrouds. These are the things, this is the kind of stuff that you kind of come in with a darker um, black line to, to paint in and it kind of makes the, the vessel stand out, especially if you, when it, what happens is these lines come up and they wrap around this structure up here and then they come down and they kind of get fastened to the side. And they, all those are really just holding the mast upright. So that's, that's this, these, these shrouds, that's what we call standing rigging. It doesn't move. And all these, all these lines here that adjust the spars and the sails, that's a running rigging. That's a much finer line. So when you're painting the lines, uh, you want to make sure you know if it's a running rigging or standing rigging. And if it's standing rigging, it's going to be thicker and heavier and darker. If it's running rigging, in, in a painting this size, it might even be worth it for me just to leave the pencil lines there and paint the blocks, the, the pulleys that the lines run through. I think if I tried to paint the lines here, um, I would lose the delicacy of the, uh, the riggings. Now, a lot of times on the uh, paintings of older vessels, you'll see the sails have look like rust marks, and dis discolorations in the sail. And basically what that is, is places where the sail is blown out or ripped and what, what you're looking at are sewn canvas patches on to keep the sail together. So to suggest that, um, what I generally do is I, I use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and kind of what you want to do is if you know basically that these sewed lines run lo longitudinally down the sail and they conform to the shape of, this, of the sail that's full of wind, you'd want to make sure that you have a, an area inside the you know, that it's kind of inside between the stitching. And, and what I do is I'll stagger it a little bit, but you want to kind of make it like it's a, a patch, you kind of randomly throw them in there. And this end that's in the sail here, that's for the city of Nantes. It's up off the Norman coast. So it's a Nantes pilot cutter. I'm just kind of slowly developing the, the contrast, the values of the painting. You know, with a detailed piece like this, I'm not really just throwing paint on and throwing a lot of water on. Basically, you using a lot of pigment, and I want to make sure that the hull, the water, the sails, the mast, and all that are equally balanced in values and contrast. So basically, I'm just trying to work back and forth between the hull and the water, because the interaction of the hull and the reflections and the shadows are, are important in a detailed image like this. If you put too much dark value on the work, sometimes you can't recover it. Now, sometimes you can with flooding it with water, Water, but I, I prefer to, to go in light and keep going back and working it. And at some point, you have to kind of know when to stop because the sometimes the paper just can't handle too many washes. We're trying to work everything a little at the same time. The, you know, the bow, the bow sprit, water, side of the hull. You know, I can say we want to slowly get everything to have the same value. And what I mean is contrast, the same amount of dark and light, or, or gradually getting darker to the front of the bow that's the deepest shadow. Now it's time to rub off the masking fluid that I put on that one line that I wanted to highlight, the cap rail, and the two rubbing strakes, the white lines on the side of the hull. The, the strakes, you can really see them, those rubbing strakes, the bright white lines there, well those are way too bright, as is the bow, which I had some masking on that. So we want to tone that down. What I'm using here is a light wash of burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of dioxide purple, and a slight touch of Payne's gray. You have to be careful with that. And I'm bringing that in and I'm painting right over with that, with a light wash right over those strakes to tone them down. And I may go back and do that again once they dry a bit, because I, I don't want those to be too light. And I'll bring some of that extra paint that I use for that down into the water to keep the to keep the values the same as I'd been doing it before, working from the hull down into the water. And I've got the pallets at a slight angle here, so the water has a tendency to, to drip down, which is fine, because we want it to be darker uh, down at the bottom of the paper. And just kind of run the brush out, get all the pigment out of it. But uh, like I say, it's just kind of a feel, bringing things in and kind of wanting it dark down at the bottom. The highlight's kind of in the area where the uh, reflection is. 
in this particular image, uh, the horizon is going to be a little bit brighter as well. I'll give a little bit more drama to the view. I'm painting in the N on the mainsail. I don't want to get that too dark because that's stitched canvas and that would have a tendency to wear out time goes on because of the sun. Better to have it too light than too dark. If it's too dark, your eye will go right to it and it's a big end and you want people to look at everything, not just the end. The ship on the horizon, you could spend time in painting in the masts and putting smoke and all that. And, and the problem with that is it's going to make the painting too static if you, if you really put a lot of detail back there. If you just suggest the how on the horizon, you know, leaving it white and maybe putting in the key shadow, which would be uh, at the stern. I think it is more impact in the painting than if you, you know, with a magnifying glass, you're trying to go in and paint all that stuff that's far away. It just doesn't work. If you just have the suggestion of something in the background, it has more impact than if you spend a lot of time detailing the thing. You know, it, it, parts of it require tender care, like, you know, when you're doing the lines and some of the detail on the, the bow, the, the front of the ship, it, you, you know, you do have to kind of get in there and paint it out. Um, you know, you can, the ship in the background doesn't need this detail, but this particular vessel in the foreground, this is the main subject matter of this painting, so you do have to, where all the detail is centered is between where those shrouds come down and that bowsprit, because that bowsprit stands proud and it's got, you know, it's got big strong coming right at you and you want that to look really good. And, and the breakwater, that the part of the stem that kind of comes straight down with the, with the where I had some masking on that, it's, a, it's, it's square and cross section. I mean, that, you know, these are tough old boats, so you want to make sure that that, uh, that looks like it's coming right at you, a punch, you know, I mean, it's just, these are really strong old boats and that, that bowsprit and that breakwater on the bow are key features in this vessel. That's what makes this painting. And the cad red and, uh, and yellow or yellow ochre. And I'll exaggerate the red and I'll just put a big dollop of uh, that on where the face is, I carry it down a little bit and where their hands might be. And I'll let that dry and then I'll paint into that some darker shadows. And that will really work when that dries out. You'll, you'll see that that reddish yellow um, exaggeration, those dots really work to suggest the face and hands rather than to try to get too detailed with it. Um, it works. And then what I'll do is I'll sometimes I'll, I'll shake off some, I'll splatter some paint on the almost finished painting just to mess it up a little bit. And I, I, I think paintings look good that are messed up. It's easy for me to kind of go on this side here and paint in because uh, I can lean a little bit closer and rest my hands somewhat on the palette, but paint in the darker shadows of the gaff and the main boom down here. And your mind works so that you can see what needs attention and what doesn't. And I'm kind of dabbing in color here and there are puddles of dark pigment. You know, I drop some right there in that hull. Steve Lush has shown us his process in creating a traditional marine watercolor. He starts with a conceptual gridded pencil sketch for composition and value study. Steve then transposes this to a watercolor sketch, trying different color combinations to develop impact. Steve applies broad color washes from the top to the bottom, wet on wet, being careful to leave the white of the paper at key highlighted areas. Finally, Steve paints around the ship on the horizon so its pencil outline is visible as a sum of the sailing vessel's running rigging. Be sure to check Steve's website, stephenlushart.com, for further examples of his fine work and to learn of upcoming shows and classes. Visit melrosearts.com for information about Melrose Arts, upcoming events, and future art in action demonstrations. Melrose Arts, dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose.